A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. On the contrary, first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout the whole country of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, I preached the need to repent and turn to God, and to do works giving evidence of repentance. That is why the Jews seized me when I was in the temple and tried to kill me. But I have enjoyed God's help to this very day, and so I stand here testifying to small and great alike, saying nothing different from what the prophets and Moses foretold, that the Messiah must suffer and that, as the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world. And tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news.
Spirit, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and he has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Well, today we celebrate the feast day of a very holy Benedictine monk whose life ended up a very different way than he had expected when he made his solemn vows. He made his vows in a beautiful little monastery in England, and he, uh, the pall was placed over his body, and he surrendered his life to the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. We were talking about it uh, not too long ago, Tyler and I, about how how moving it is when a monk makes profession. And traditionally nuns do the same, is that they lie down in a surrender of their life, just like the priest does at his ordination. And, uh, but the monk is then covered, and the nun is covered with his or her funeral pall, which is preserved until the day of the funeral. And it's a way of, of reminding that of a hymn the monk or the nun, um, that, you, that you have died to Christ. You have laid down your life, just like our gospel today, for the sake of something bigger than you. And for the sake of your God, you have given up your life. And just like St. Paul says in Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. He lives his life in me. I still live my natural life, but it is a life of faith in the one who loved me. Beautiful, and that's what this, so he had made his, he lay down on the floor and the funeral pall was put on him in the year 700 or so, and, uh, and he thought he'd be a monk his whole life in the monastery, going to his offices every day, doing the life of Ora et Labora, and, um, and he did end up serving as a monk his whole life, but in a very different way. He was summoned um, to be a missionary by Pope Gregory II. And I think he must have scratched his head and thought, what are you talking about, Pope? I'm a monk. I'm not a missionary. And, uh, but nonetheless, the Pope was, Pope Gregory II, of course, was quite, quite the Benedictine himself. And uh, he knew that there is a piece of the rule that insists upon the missionary nature of everyone, including the monk. And uh, uh, he must have reminded Boniface of that. He said, Boniface, there's a lot of problems going on in Germany. The land has gone to hell. There's paganism out the wazoo over there. And um, people have abandoned their God. And, and there's a lot of uh, pockets where there still is Catholicism. But it's real watered down. Sounds like Germany today. <laughs> and a lot of places today, unfortunately. But... The Pope said, you go over there and you fix it, do what you can. And so Boniface was obedient to the Holy Father and obedient to his monastic vows in a way that he did not expect he would be obedient to his Benedictine vows. And he, uh, he did, he went over to Germany and he revitalized the Catholic Church there. And he noticed that there were a lot of issues with even the clergy. Some of the clergy had, uh, become a bit of Judas and had sold Christ for something else, not 30 pieces of silver, but the values of the world. And um, so Boniface 
uh, was very insistent to, to them, and he didn't mince words. And he reminded them what it's all about, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he said, you realize people are going to hell, left and right, because you're lazy. You're not doing your job. You're not being a good shepherd. No wonder we have this gospel today about being a good shepherd. It's because Boniface was a good shepherd, even though he thought he'd just be a, a monk shut up in the monastery all his life. But he was an amazing shepherd, and he called all those priests in pagan Germany to become good shepherds too. It's like a John Vianney in some ways. Sometimes it just takes a hero to remind everybody else what they're supposed to be. It takes somebody who's actually living truthfully and faithfully to the gospel to remind everybody else that they're supposed to be living faithfully and truthfully to the gospel. And that's true for priesthood. It's also true for the life of the laity. It takes a heroic person and a good example, a life truly given over to the Lord to remind the rest of the pagans and the family <laughs> or the rest of the people whose faith is quite watered down what they're supposed to be doing. And um, it, it's funny how that domino effect of grace happens. Pope, uh, or not Pope, uh, Pope Gregory II was very grateful that, he, that Boniface said yes. And Boniface worked tirelessly to convert pagan Germany back to the true fold. He did a lot of good stuff while he was there. And one of the most important things was to bring culture, bring the nice, restore the Catholic culture. And I think that's a piece of what our job is to do too, which is one reason that we've got this bookshelf series going on in the uh, bulletin, is because so many Catholics don't read books about the faith anymore. And it used to be unheard of that you'd have a Catholic without Catholic books in his or her house, and now most of many don't. And to restore uh, this intellectual culture, this Catholic culture, uh, is an important piece of what we're called to do. To make sure that, you know, our, our faith has produced so much beauty, so much, so many contributions to the society, and Benedictines have uh, had a big piece to do with that. If you've never read the book, The Benedict Option, really good book. And... Um, but it's all about how the Benedictine mon monastic movement restored civilization and baptized civilization and brought culture, true beauty, and, and, and helped people to reach their potential because of these, the monastic movement, which summoned people to something higher than themselves. So we give a good, good Lord thanks today. And I think maybe that's our job is to, uh, to contribute to a Catholic culture, help make sure that everybody that we know and in our sphere of influence is reading good Catholic books and is, is being, watching good Catholic shows and movies and things. There's so much good stuff out there. So much good stuff. And to help that, that, that seep in, that it seeps into us when we surround ourselves with these sorts of things. You know, they seep into us. And, and, and then they become part of who we are. I always say, if you surround yourself with holy things, holy paintings of the Blessed Mother, the saints, our dear Lord, our Blessed Lord, that if we surround ourselves with things that are holy, we might just find that we're becoming holy. And so that's one piece. And a second piece is to, to call people out of their lukewarm faith, in charity and in love, but to... to do what Boniface did. Restore culture and, and try to heat up the lukewarm and help them be on fire for our Lord again. And that's our job, my dear friends. Let's stand for our prayers. For our dear Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his intentions, his safety, and his health, we pray to the good Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who govern the lands of the world. May they do so wisely, we pray to the Lord. For all Benedictine monks and nuns, especially those who serve our own diocese in the monastery of St. Mindred and in the uh, monastic community of women there in Beech Grove, for them we pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the monastic way of life, 
especially in our own diocese. We pray to the Lord. In gratitude for people like St. Boniface, who help us all to realize that we are called to sainthood, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our families, for the continued sanctification of all families, all children, all married couples, all engaged couples. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the seminarians of our archdiocese and for many more of them. And we pray in a special way for our own seminarian, Tyler Huber. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those suffering, those without food, without family, without health, without faith, that God might grant them relief, we pray to the Lord. For an end to racism and for an end to senseless violence, we pray to the Lord. And we pray in a special way for all those who have gone before us in the faith and await the kingdom, especially the people in our own families who have passed away. And we pray in this Mass in a very special way for our intention June cord, we pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we place these and all our prayers before you. In your mercy and love, we ask you to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the May the offerings we bring in commemoration of Blessed Boniface be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty, just as the shedding of this martyr's blood was precious in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Boniface, poured out like Christ's to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble, bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The old Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. The body of Christ.
what has passed our lips as food, O oh Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Oh, my. 